This episode of Direct Comparison is brought to you by Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a subscription-based delivery service that brings a unique collection of pop culture merchandise right to your doorstep. Ever since 2012, Loot Crate has continued to expand to include items from some of the biggest pop culture IP holders, including Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Universal, and even a bunch of high-profile game publishers. So, if you're looking to spruce up your gaming space with some cool gaming-related collector's items, be sure to check out this month's box that includes several items based on Bethesda's biggest properties, including Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and one of this year's biggest shooter games, Doom Eternal. Each crate is filled with $60 worth of gear, and you can sign up for as low as $28.95 a month, with a subscription plan that works best for you. And if you use the promo code NICK30, you can knock off an additional 30% off your purchase. You can find more information listed in the description below. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to cover another PlayStation 5 exclusive, the remake of From Software's brutally challenging classic, Demon Souls and see how it compares to the original release of the game from 2009. For this comparison, the remake of Demon's Souls on the PS5 is configured to play in its cinematic mode, which locks the game to a native 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. And the original game is being played on the PlayStation 3, which only offers a humble 720p resolution at 30fps. However, I will demonstrate the benefits of the remake's new 60fps performance mode, and explain why it's definitely the way to go if you decide to pick this game up. Alright, so let's kick this comparison off by first looking at some of our character models, starting with the player model. For this analysis, I decided to create a simple knight class character, that by default is equipped with the same fluted armor set. And as you can clearly see, there's been an exceptional overhaul to the quality and visual complexity of this character design. The poly count has seen an exponential increase, allowing for intricate details to pop on the screen that were never even perceivable before. And every texture map has been tailor-made for Ultra HD displays. And the results are truly incredible. You can now see scratches along every single plate of armor, along with what looks like decorative motifs carved into the metal. Each leather strap is now accompanied by supplemental buttons, folds, and steel rings and the cloth garments hidden underneath that used to look like rubber tubes now feature a great new stitch pattern. But what's even more interesting is that the armor itself has been redesigned a good amount. The general style remains intact, but features like the helm look almost completely different, with thinner slits along the visor and a more prominent crest along the top ridge. It's a much more intimidating design choice, and I feel it matches the tone of the game's dark atmosphere a bit more. But it's not just the player's character that has seen these improvements. All the enemies and NPCs throughout the game have similarly been given a next generation treatment, and the results are impressive. The Maiden in Black, for example, retains all the aspects from before, like her hairstyle, jewelry, and outfit. But we can see it now in a new light, as the black rags now feature visibly loose threads along the edges. The decorative inlay along her robe is now more prominent, and her signature waxed over eyes are more clear as it now appears with more depth and texture, as opposed to the flat dark shade used before. The blacksmith located in the Nexus features even more drastic changes, as his old dirty rag has been replaced with a damaged leather armor set instead. His beard is also fuller now, and he's now wearing an elaborate gauntlet on his left arm, making him appear more like a skilled blacksmith than what he appeared like before. We could go on forever detailing each and every character in the game, as they've all seen some pretty substantial changes. But the general takeaway here is that everything has been lovingly recreated on Bluepoint's more advanced graphics engine, with a surprisingly high level of fidelity. And while some of the redesigns may have strayed a bit from the original art style, they all still fit in well with the atmosphere, and at least when you first see them, it's a joy to discover these enemies all over again. Next up, let's take a look at the environments. Now, as with any Soulsborne style game, you're going to become extremely familiar with these levels, especially considering how often you'll likely die and have to replay them. And if you've already suffered through the brutal gauntlet that is Demon Souls in the past, then you should feel right at home with this remake, as the structure of each and every area is practically unchanged. Every enemy ambush, shortcut, narrow ledge, and deadly trap is exactly where it should be, Though you might have trouble recognizing it at first, thanks to the incredible work Bluepoint has done updating it all. Take the initial tutorial area for example. 
It might look a bit different at first glance, what with its much longer arch ceiling, added vegetation, and of course its vastly improved geometry and texture quality. But it's still exactly the same length, and leads into the same courtyard area with the game's first enemy. This area is more of the same story, some incredible improvements to the level of detail, while also retaining all the key components and scaling. I was even surprised that Bluepoint kept a lot of the old structural details intact, like these broken pillars here. Only, instead of being made of stone, they're now made of wood with vegetation growing around them. This attention to detail not only ensures that areas share the same DNA as the original 2009 game, but also enables players the ability to utilize the same combat tactics as before, like using certain objects as cover from enemy projectiles or creating space in order to safely heal up. It's pretty shocking just how many of these tiny details Bluepoint managed to preserve, like this broken wooden door or these storage crates hidden in the corner. Even this small pile of rubble seems to have been purposely put in place where this fire pit used to be, guaranteeing that despite the drastic change to the visual design, the game still feels the same to play through. But let's fast forward a bit and talk about the next major area in the game, Bulletaria Castle. Seeing as this is probably one of the most recognizable sections of the game, it makes sense that Bluepoint would put an extra level of care and detail into revamping this grand entranceway. Like with the tutorial area, the general structure remains intact, but it's covered with a substantial layer of new detail to really add more depth and personality to the presentation. Each of the main gate's flanking towers now sports a large network of scaffolding and box windows, some of which have been lit alight by the rampaging dragon nearby and new decorative pieces have been put in place, many of which expand on the gothic theme of the game. It's a pretty impressive update, and like before, this extends to the finer details all around the player as well. Like higher resolution textures, a huge increase to the amount of vegetation, some of which is dynamic, and even areas with wet mud that the player can leave footprints in temporarily. So the big takeaway with the environments is that each level in the game is exactly the same in terms of its scaling and design but every single pillar, tile, patch of grass, and wall has been overhauled with better textures and geometry, all while ensuring the gameplay feels exactly as you remember. Another major contributing factor to the remake's visual design is its lighting. As we've seen with a lot of our direct comparisons we've made throughout this year, lighting can really make or break the look of a game's visual quality, and the Demon Souls remake demonstrates exactly how it's supposed to be done. Bluepoint has completely nailed the look and feel of this game's atmosphere, all while drastically changing the coloration and techniques used to light the environment. Rather than just burying the game in its original drab brown look from before, this remake offers a much more natural color tone, with a good balance of blue and green light to properly capture the moody locales. But it also includes much more sophisticated techniques that just weren't possible in the original game due to the limitations of the hardware. Volumetric lighting, screen space reflections, and enhanced global illumination all help to create a lifelike looking image, and when combined with an HDR compatible display, it's really impressive looking. The original game, even considering the time it released, didn't utilize the most impressive lighting techniques. It employed some rudimentary form of rasterization and offered no form of dynamic effects. And interior areas, like this section in 2.1, look absolutely terrible, with a floor that's weirdly glowing red for no reason. The remake fixes all this, and light behaves more believably. However, because of this, you may find yourself struggling to see in some areas, especially the larger towers and cavernous drops, making some of the awkward platforming even more challenging. But if you want something more akin to the original game's unnatural color tones and brightness settings, you can use the filters offered in the game's photo mode to change the look of the image in-game. Now, sadly, Demon's Souls on the PlayStation 5 does not make use of any of the new AMD-based ray tracing techniques offered by the new hardware, but I think this game makes a good case that ray tracing isn't everything, and just having some fantastic global illumination along with some well-implemented post-processing effects can create an equally convincing image. Shadows have also seen a huge upgrade. Now, the first area I checked with this was the tutorial section. And I was surprised to find that, unlike the original game's incredibly sharp, albeit pixelated projection, the new game's shadows are barely noticeable. But this is actually a good thing, as you wouldn't expect to see a clear shadow in these atmospheric conditions. And you'll find that shadows in general behave much more realistically in this remake, with varying levels of intensity depending on the light source and the distance to the object casting the shadow. 
there's no dynamic time of day, so all the shadows are baked in. But the way they've been baked in feels so much more precise, and it helps to accentuate all the new details incorporated into the structures and the statues. I was a little disappointed to find that the light cast by the player's vial of souls doesn't appear to cast any real-time shadows on the environment. It does cast a player shadow, which means you'll only see light cast in front of the model, but it doesn't seem to cast shadows from environmental objects like fences or pillars like it probably should. Next up, we have effects. Now the first effect that really took me by surprise when the remake booted up was the water simulation. Water simulation was handled extremely well here, with some nice fluid physics that react believably whenever the player trudges through shallow ponds and puddles. The original game simply emitted splash effects at greater quantities depending on the player's movement, while the fluid itself remained completely static. Fire and explosions that previously appeared as big balls of yellow light now are rendered in much higher quality, with additional particle effects like embers, shrapnel, and smoke effects, along with improved dynamic lighting capabilities that make scenes like epic boss fights all the more intense. And then there's the dynamic physics that hold up surprisingly well in the original game, with lots of props in the environment featuring destructibility with some impressive Havoc-based physical manipulation. Though this looks even more impressive in the remake, thanks to the increase to the amount of dynamic pieces and the heavier ragdoll physics applied to things like enemy corpses. But of course, after 11 years, all these visual improvements are expected. So let's take a brief look at how the gameplay has been altered. So, for the most part, the gameplay is purposely designed to remain almost exactly the same as the original. This is the type of game that players have learned to master, despite all of its strange quirks and arguably clumsy controls. So, knowing this, Bluepoint made the choice to preserve everything as closely as possible. That being said, there are a few interesting quality of life improvements hidden throughout. First, there's the character creation menu. The remake expands upon the cosmetic aspect of this a great deal with a ton more options to choose between and a much cleaner interface to get a better view of what your character will end up looking like. The hairstyles have been redone to be more appropriate with the time period, and things like facial hair, tattoos, and individual body part scales have been enhanced to give you more control over how your character looks. When actually playing in-game, all the controls and mechanics feel about the same. You can run, block, slash, and stab, and all the weapons handle as you remember. Though Bluepoint did manipulate the ability to roll slightly, allowing players to roll omnidirectionally now. The remake also changes a pretty major aspect of the healing system, by greatly limiting the number of healing items a player can hold at them at any one time. Green Grass, for example, has had its max carry capacity decreased from almost 100 down to 50, and stronger healing items like New Moon are now limited to only 10. So you're going to have to be a bit more conservative with your healing items as you travel through the game now. The Demon Souls remake also adds in a new photo mode, which offers a surprisingly large amount of options to tweak in order to capture your favorite moments with a high-resolution snapshot. And last but not least, there's the new features made possible by the PS5's unique hardware capabilities, including haptic feedback that adds in more precise controller vibration that not only adds to the immersion but can also warn the player of an impending attack, and adaptive triggers that will offer more tension when trying to use tools like the bow and arrow. And then there's the toggable graphics modes, allowing for a native 4K cinematic mode at 30fps, or the much smoother dynamic 4K at a locked 60fps, which I strongly recommend using. There's a few other changes hidden throughout, like new secret items to find and some tweaks to the multipart content, but otherwise the gameplay experience should remain very loyal to the source material. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which version of the game do you think offers the best overall sound quality? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you. that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Brave soul who fears not death. 
I shall guide you to the fissure. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. Overall, the Demon Souls remake is probably one of the most visually stunning updates to a game I've covered all year. And that's really saying something, because the remakes for Tony Hawk, Mafia, and Final Fantasy VII have all been similarly incredible. Every character model has been beautifully recreated with much higher fidelity textures and more complex geometry, giving them this depth and detail that we could only imagine before. And the level environments that so many Demon Souls veterans have painfully embedded into their memories have been given a total makeover, while still staying incredibly loyal to the source material and enhancing it with new effects, details, and a few gameplay tweaks to improve on the game's very few shortcomings. Now, if you weren't a fan of Demon Souls before, then I can't say this remake will necessarily change your mind. It's still an incredibly difficult game, and there's a fair amount of trial and error involved, along with troll messages left by online players and the occasionally annoying invasion that you still can't disable. But for players looking to really push their PlayStation 5 and see what it's capable of, and who are willing to learn all the ins and outs of From Software's breakaway masterpiece, this is no question a must-have title for any early adopter of the console, and sets the bar exceptionally high for both remakes and PlayStation's well-received exclusive lineup. But what do you guys think? Are you impressed by what Bluepoint managed to accomplish here, or do you still prefer the look and feel of the original game? Let me know in the comments section. And once again, I want to give a big shout out to Loot Crate for sponsoring this video. If your gaming space is looking a bit empty, and you're looking to decorate it with some cool gaming or other pop culture merchandise, you should definitely try them out. You can find a link to their website in the description below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for continued coverage of all the latest next-gen content posted every week.